Africa Global Radio. Our story, our growth, our future. Headlines across Africa. Welcome to Africa Global Radio. I'm Itumeleng Lebohambi bringing you headlines across Africa for Tuesday, 30 of April. In today's bulletin, one of the benefactors of the Eastern DRC conflict, Apple, has been challenged to account for its supply chain. Togo's Electoral Commission set to unveil preliminary results throughout today. And Norwegian Foreign Minister criticized violations of international law and bias by the West in the Gaza and Ukraine wars. Amongst other minerals, gemstones and metals, the Democratic Republic of Congo holds more than 70% of the world's cotton reserves, which have for decades been the excuse to fuel violent conflict in the east of the country with Rwanda. Ironically, two weeks ago, ECOFIN agency reported that the 2023 cotton exports from the DRC totaled 1,918 tons compared to 2,070 tons for Rwanda. Although Rwanda denies accusations of plundering Congo's resources, President Paul Kagame recently acknowledged that his country serves as a hub for the smuggling of Congolese minerals, pointing to the international community as the primary benefactor in the morally distorted global supply chain for the mineral. Experts interested in the matter have repeatedly advised DRC and Rwanda to resolve their disputes through economic solutions and fair trade. Meanwhile, international lawyers representing the Democratic Republic of Congo wrote to Apple CEO Tim Cook eight days ago demanding answers on the source of minerals they use to manufacture the company's products. Led by Robert Amsterdam in Washington, D.C. and William Boudon in Paris, the group of lawyers also wrote to Apple subsidiaries in France demanding a response within three weeks. Togo's crucial legislative and regional elections for 113 parliamentary seats and 179 senatorial positions were held peacefully on Monday, 29th April. The 4.2 million registered voters had the opportunity to cast a ballot at the over 14,200 polling stations operated nationwide from 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. yesterday. Togo's authorities sealed the borders on Monday for security reasons and dispatched some 12,000 paramilitary and police officers to safeguard the voting process. Observer missions from the African Union, among other organizations, were also authorized to monitor the vote. The Electoral Commission has pledged to unveil trends of preliminary results as they come. Norwegian Foreign Minister Espen Barth Eid's recent remarks highlight a growing concern over the erosion of institutional credibility in the face of humanitarian crises. Eid voiced strong criticism against certain Western nations for their inconsistent responses to violations of international law in Gaza and Ukraine. He specifically condemned their hesitance to use the same language and level of condemnation when addressing violations of international humanitarian law in Gaza compared to situations like the conflict in Ukraine. Echoing Eid's sentiments, Ethiopian Minister of Finance Ahmed Sheed Mohammed emphasized the unique and dire nature of the crisis in Gaza. Mohammed called for swift action to end the humanitarian crisis and to ensure lasting peace in the region, underscoring its significance for global solidarity and cooperation. Meanwhile, the U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken began his seventh diplomatic mission to the Middle East since the Israel-Hamas war on Monday. And with that, we've come to the end of Headlines Across Africa with me, Itimeleng Lebohambi. Join us again tomorrow for our midweek bulletin right here on Africa Global Radio. For this and more, check us out on africaglobalradio.com, on Facebook and YouTube, Africa Global Radio, on Twitter and Instagram, AF Global Radio.